வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஹவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் ஸ்கெலிட்டல் மசில்ஸ் ஸ்பெசிஃபிகலி இன் திஸ் கிளாஸ் ஐ வாண்ட் டு டிஸ்கஸ் அண்ட் ப்ரொவைட் சம் மோர் டீட்டெயில்ஸ் அண்ட் பெனேஷன் வி இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் திஸ் நோஷன் ஆஃப் பெனேஷன் இன் ஒன் ஆஃப் த ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோஸ் ஐ தாட் இட் மேக்ஸ் சென்ஸ் டு கோ அ லிட்டில் டீப்பர் அண்ட் டிஸ்கஸ் what penation means for us what is its uh, practical uh, consequence some ex- with some examples okay remember something to note is that when we say muscle force what do we mean by that is it the sum of all the muscle fiber forces or is it the force that is felt at the bone what exactly is meant when you say muscle force the answer is in general when someone says muscle force that is the force that is exerted by the tendon on the bone this is what it means for a biomechanist so we are looking at the force exerted by the tendon on the muscle not how the tendon itself is getting the force that is not is that is not what is called as muscle force muscle force means force experienced by the bone force exerted by the tendon on the bone this is muscle force if the muscle fibers are all parallel to the tendon then the sum of all the muscle fiber force will be the muscle force but this is not a given this is not a must so uh, muscle fibers may or may not be parallel to the tendon there are many cases in which the muscle fibers are not parallel to the tendon that is the case that we discussed here is a case in which the fibers are parallel to each other but not to the tendon they are inclined at an angle to the tendon is it not the case of the unipinnate muscle note how this internal tendon what do i mean by this internal tendon is that part of the tendon where it is attaching to the muscle fibers the external tendon is the one that is attaching to the bone okay uh, now also note importantly how as the number of fibers that attach to the internal tendon grows the width of the internal tendon increases because it must be able to support that much force more force so as it need as there is a need to support more force the strength of the internal tendon itself keeps increasing of course uh, your question would be why not keep a very broad tendon from the beginning because it is inefficient see uh, that is where the biological system is so efficient right it starts with a narrow tendon in the beginning because that much is sufficient to support the force of one fiber and then as it goes down there is this width so that is that there is this arrangement I mean when i zoom in this is what i'm going to say at the end of the internal tendon this part of the tendon that is attaching to the bone is called as the external tendon this part that is attaching to the muscle fibers is called as internal tendon or in a previous class i mentioned this as aponeurosis aponeurosis right on the aponeurosis forces are in series right so forces get added here in series each fiber is producing force in parallel so the fiber force on the aponeurosis is parallel but the force on the aponeurosis keeps on getting added in series right of course parts of the aponeurosis located close to the tendon what tendon we are referring to when we simply say tendon we are referring to the external tendon when we refer to the aponeurosis we must 
specialize that we must specifically say that that is the internal tendon if I do not say the internal tendon if I simply say tendon that means it is the external tendon ok. Parts of the upper neurosis that are located closer to the external tendon they transmit and they can overcome withstand and transmit a large amount of force when compared with those parts that are far away there because of this efficient arrangement. Now, let us uh, zoom in a little bit and take only one fiber let us assume for the sake of discussion that um, the fibers are all parallel to each other and the pennation angle which is the angle at which the fiber is attaching to the internal tendon is the same for all fibers this is an assumption this is not always true but it is true in many cases ok. So, let us look at this with a bit more detail ok. The fibers are attaching like this in the case of the unipennate uh, case ok. The fibers are all parallel to each other ok and they are attaching like this the angle of attachment is some theta some theta theta is the angle of angle at which the fibers are attaching. There are many case many possibilities in which this can happen one is there is only a single tendon muscle the fibers are all attaching to the bone directly like this this is a one tendon muscle. Then you have a two tendon muscle with parallel fibers of equal length like this with some theta to the tendon whereas you see that there are two upper neurosis there is one upper neurosis here and there is one upper neurosis here. Okay. So, the angle that you are having there will be two of these right there will be one theta here and there will be another angle that need not be theta that can be something other than theta in this case marked as phi right. Of course, I have assumed that the fiber lengths to be equal, but this need not be the case. Uh, more uh, special case is when the fibers length also keep changing as uh, the as we proceed from one side of the muscle to the other side or as we proceed from the origin to the insertion you are going to have a, uh, a convergent type of feature that is the other possibility. Let us take the simple case where there is a where I have an internal tendon and there are these parallel fibers attaching at some angle theta ok. Let us say that each uh, and let us say that I have 100 such fibers remember a muscle can have thousands of fibers let us say that I am having 100 such fibers and I am going to call the force produced but by each fiber as some small f f and they let us assume that they all produce an equal amount of force also an assumption because they all may or may not belong to the same motor unit. Maybe they will belong to the same motor unit, but that is not a necessary condition. Let us assume that uh, they all produce an equal amount of force f f. I will assume there are 100 such fibers. So, the total force that is produced by all these fibers put together is 100 f f. The question is uh, what will be the force that will be felt here at the external tendon bone junction that is the question. Well, that is obviously a function of theta let us assume that all of them are making same theta right. So, let us take one fiber this is the fiber and uh, this is the I am interested in this component let us analyze this using our principle of statics right. I am interested in the y component of this f f what would that be that would be you know that would be that distance right. Uh, so, I if I know f so this is f f right I am interested in this distance this 
this component this is what I am interested in what would that be that would be f of cos theta right not or in this right triangle I going to call this as O and I am going to call this point as A and I am going to call this point as B. I am interested in finding O A, this is what I am interested in. in this A B is the hypotenuse. So, cos theta is O A by A B, right not. So, O A would then be A B cos theta, it is an example. Now, if I were to align a b such that it is along o a or theta is very close to 0 that is the parallel fibered muscle for me right. So, that means it is useful to have minimal penetration angle so that maximal force transmission happens I mean that is a desirable quality, but that is that is not always the case because I am interested in packing many fibers in a small volume there is a third dimension that we have not discussed right here I am doing simply a planar analysis I am interested in packing a large number of fibers in a relatively small volume. So, I am inclining this you know these fibers. So, only a component of the muscle fiber force F f will be felt at the uh, external tendon level. So, each fiber will contribute you know f of cos theta or in this case I am calling this as f of uh, a b rather f of cos theta. So, if I have 100 such fibers I will have 100 f of cos theta is what will be felt at the tendon this is the muscle force when I say muscle force I am talking about the force that is felt at the tendon. So, I will only have a component it is indeed desirable to have this theta to be smaller from the viewpoint of having maximum force transmission efficiency. If I was uh, producing this much force might as well transmit all of them right, but that is not the only factor under consideration there are many other factors under consideration force transmission efficiency is one of them of course, we would like to have force transmission efficiency, but we are also interested in packing more fibers a trade off will have to be made somewhere. Right. So, this is the situation only a component of the fiber force gets transmitted to the external tendon and felt at the bone something to keep in mind ok. So, what is this penetration angle we already mentioned this uh, this is the angle between the muscle fiber and the line of muscle action or the, or the upper neurosis. Uh, it says line of muscle action or upper neurosis because sometimes there might be no alignment between the line of uh, muscle action and upper neurosis. Sometimes the external tendon and the internal tendon may not be aligned, you know. So, that is the other possibility. Fortunately, it does not go very high because cos 0 is 1, cos 90 is 0, it goes only between 0 and 30, which itself is relatively large range ok. Something to keep in mind in the previous uh, slide I mentioned that all the fibers are having the same penetration angle this is not true this is not uniform throughout the muscle ok. It changes with the age and it changes with weight training strength training when people uh, build muscles it changes. Now, let us look at these two things take a few seconds and take a look at these two things. When you say it changes with age um, what do you mean um, does it increase or does it decrease because a decrease because a decrease in the angle in the penetration angle is the desirable quality is the desirable thing and an increase is undesirable and because we know that uh, aging generally brings in a lot of undesirable things one might think one might be tempted to think 
that uh, penation angle actually increases with the agent, right? But that is not what happens, right? So it defies intuition. You think that uh, an undesirable thing, one of the many undesirable things that happen with uh, old age might be that the penation angle will increase with the age. This is not what happens. Penation angle actually reduces with age because there is a depth of muscle fibers and the need to pack there is general muscle atrophy, right. So, the need to pack more number of fibers in a small volume reduces because of this need more and more fibers start aligning along with the upper neurosis thus reducing the penation angle. This itself is not a good thing because I mean uh, this alone taken alone might be a good thing, but the reason why it happens is not necessarily a good thing. So, although the force transmission efficiency increases, the force itself reduces because of the depth of muscle fibers, okay, something, something to keep in mind. So, now the other question is what happens with muscle hypertrophy when someone is doing strength training and building muscle. Now, you would think that oh, the desirable thing is to have uh, you know alignment right. So, exercise brings in alignment or reduces uh, the, so you would expect that exercise uh, brings in more alignment or reduce the penation angle. No, actually what happens is muscle hypertrophy will have a need to pack in more and more fibers in a small volume thus gradually increasing the penation angle and reducing the force transmission efficiency. The transmission efficiency of force will reduce, but the force produced will increase. How is this possible? Because more and more fibers are getting added as people do strength training more and more fibers will get added and the transmission efficiency will reduce because you will have to pack that in a given volume, right. So, muscle hypertrophy due to strength and uh, uh, weight training actually leads to an increase in penation angle, okay. So, let me write out for clarification penation angle reduces with age, penation angle increases with strength training, something to keep in mind. Also, something to keep in mind is when the joint angle changes, muscle length changes, in that case what happens with penation angle? It turns out that penation angle is not a constant, penation angle is defined for a configuration. So, in many cases as the configuration changes, the penation angle itself changes or in other words the muscle rotates. So, it, it not only uh, you know changes the angle, it also so, in this video we saw some more details on penation, penation angle and how penation angle changes as a function of age and as a function of uh, strength training and exercise. Thank you very much for your attention.